Yes, um, I work with uh, young, enthusiastic people. So Annalene uh, Brans and I did some research on uh, uh, tension versus compression splinting. We are surgeons or future su surgeons, and we do like to operate, but the most important motivation is, of course, to help the patient. And we wanted to see if we could uh, improve the outcome with uh, splinting. Actually, um, this was inspired at Miami at the last meeting. I came home and in the airplane, I said, now I'm going to try something. Since we know that um, mechanical forces on Dupertrans disease can influence uh, the Dupertrans tissue, why not try and influence them in vivo in the patient himself? So what we know is that the myofibroblast is the, uh, the cause of contracture, progression, and recurrence of the disease, and it can and it is a uh, the, the target in the therapeutic strategies as a surgery, radiotherapy, and uh, pharmacotherapy. But why not use mechanotherapy? And we know that tension might induce uh, the contractures of the myofibroblast or the activity of the myofibroblast and the collagen production, although we've seen yesterday also that continuous limited tension might uh, induce a remodulation and enzyme stimulation. The idea is that tension might thus uh, induce uh, contractures even. <coughs> And on the other hand, compression that's inspired by the uh, uh, burn scar tissue treatments may trigger my fibroblast apoptosis and re uh, induce restoration of the cell organization and with the spreading of the pressure by silicon sheet may cause uh, nodule softening and perhaps we can uh, reduce the contracture. So the idea is that uh, actually the, uh, the uh, onset of the study is uh, is kind of malign um, because I wanted, or I wanted to compare compression versus tension, uh, so I wanted to make them worse or better. But this was, of course, not uh, to the ethical committee. We're just comparing two splinting methods. We're not. So Annaline is going to present her work. Thank you. So uh, 30 patients so with measurable flexion contractures were randomized in two groups to compare the, the tension and the compression splints. Patients had to wear the splint 20 hours a day during three months, and the collected data were uh, total extension deficit, uh, FAS scale of uh, function and aesthetic, and patient satisfaction. We used a tension split with an uh, an extension insert on the dorsal side, and uh, patients uh, of the compression group uh, received a new designed compression splint with silicon beds and Velcro strips. 21 male and 9 female were included uh, for this uh, pilot randomized controlled trial. The mean age of presentation was 63 years old, but the mean age of disease onset was 54 years old. Both groups were comparable uh, with respect to the baseline characteristics. Four patients were unable to adhere to the uh, treatment protocol. Two patients of the compression group. One patient uh, reported the splint was not uh, comfortable to wear to do his job. And uh, the second patient uh, seized uh, on advice of his generalist who didn't believe in non-operative treatment of Dupuytren's disease. The two patients uh, with a tension splint uh, complained of too much pain. And we uh, used uh, only as treated analysis. There was no disease stabilization. Uh, improvement of range of motion was uh, seen in all patients. And uh, this is a patient with uh, total uh, extension after uh, three months wearing the splint. There was a significant reduction of the total active extension after wearing both the tension and the compression splint. But there was no significant difference between both groups. The FAS score uh, of functionality and aesthetic was significantly increased uh, comparing the initial and the final consultation uh, of both tension and compression group. Um, the uh, FAS functional was 11% higher in the compression group, but there was no uh, significant difference in the FAS aesthetic between both groups. 11 patients, uh, or 85% uh, of the patients of the compression group, were very satisfied about the treatment result, and only five patients, or 38% of the uh, tension group. So there is a higher degree of satisfaction with the compression technique, but this is not significant. Uh, after three months, only one, patients decided, one patient decided to quit the therapy and uh, switch to another treatment. 
all other patients prefer to continue to wear the splint in order to maintain the treatment effect, and most of them only at night time. Um, the disadvantage of the tension splint or pain and ulcera. Uh, limitation of the compression splint is the inability to uh, adequately fit the skin. It's difficult to have a, a really good skin splint contact. The interface pressure can uh, give us an idea uh, about, this, uh, about this contact. Most, of, most authors suggest a, a pressure of 25 millimeters of uh, mercury, but this is not evidence-based. So it's a discussion. Uh, tension, spl tension splint seems to have no, uh, si uh, no uh, specific uh, advantage uh, in contrast to compression splints who soften uh, the nodules and uh, are better tolerated, which is really very important for patient compliance. So um, although I was somewhat uh, disappointed that there was no difference, I'm very happy for the patients because it all seemed to help. So a short-term outcome of both uh, compression uh, and, and, and extension or tension splinting is, seems to be efficient. And since it's non-invasive and at low cost, it should be added to the treatment options in Dupuytren disease. Uh, and we must say that it was both successful in uh, uh, primary treatment as in post-recurrence treatment. So I think um, the compre although the outcome was the same, since uh, the compression splinting is better tolerated and was more satisfying to the patient, I think we should uh, continue to adjust the splinting method and look at the long-term results because we do not know when to stop with the splinting, of course. And then if we look at the literature, there is limited uh, literature on the tension splinting. With, uh, there were, we weren't the first to see that you could gain extension. It's just we don't know how to keep or maintain this, uh, this gain. Um, but if we look at the uh, compression splinting, there is a few literature or, well, we didn't find any literature on this. So in the future, maybe we can crush Dupuytren contractures. Uh, this was the... The, the symbol of my PhD in 2009, it's the hands of my father who had a dupe trans and he was holding the new, my first uh, newborn the day she was born and I made a kind of a world of it. As you can see, there was a bit of creativity of mine. So maybe we should crush this world in the future and Annalene and I, we, we love to study together but we also love to laugh together and this lunch we spent useful and we added a small slide. So uh, this is the dupe trans research. Keyboard. Thank you.